Hello everyone, welcome to PeopleSwap channel where we simplify PeopleSwap concepts in everyday language. My name is Samir and in this video we will discuss about events in PeopleSwap. So we will start the discussion by understanding what is event in general in any programming language. Then we will see what are all the events which are available in people code. Then we will see the event flow. Since there are multiple events in people swap, we will try to see the order in which they occur in people code. And since there are multiple events, it can be a confusion for beginners to identify what is the correct event in which to write the people code. Hence, finally, we will see an easier way to find out the correct event to write the people code for your requirement. So without further delay, let's start the discussion. So what is an event in a programming language? So an event is an occurrence of a specific activity or a specific action which is recognized by the programming language and a developer can make use of this event in order to generate the system response by writing a particular program. For example, if you come from a traditional programming languages like web development languages such as JavaScript, there is a very common event called onClick. So when a user click on a button, the programmer can display a certain set of message or a certain set of page that comes under onClick event Similarly, when you, let's say you are on the Amazon.com website and if you try to search on the search bar, as soon as you keep on typing, you keep on getting the results, the search results from the Amazon. So this is handled by the on change event for a search bar. Similarly, there are multiple events in PeopleSoft. Let's have a look on them. Before we start looking into people code events, we should understand the various items or various objects with which we can write the people code. So as you can see from the official people tools document, we can write the people code in association with the six different objects. These are menu items, component record fields, component records, components, pages and record fields. So, we can write the people code which is required with any of these six items. All right. Now, each of these six items have certain set of events associated with them. So, let's have a look at those events. As you can see, these are the six different items and a list of events which are associated with each item. One important observation to make here is there are some events which are available in more than one places or more than one item. For example, if you look at field change event, then you would notice that the field change event is available here in the record field events and this is also available here in the component record field events. Similarly, there are a couple of events, for example, save edit. This event is available here in the component record event. Also, this event is available here in the record field events. So, these events fire or these events are executed in a certain set of action throughout the life cycle of a transaction. So, let's try to understand the event flow to understand what is the sequence in which these events occur. Now, this is the event flow diagram for the people code events. This diagram contains all the unique events which are associated in people code and it indicates the correct sequence in which these events are executed throughout a transaction in PeopleSoft. As you can see, there are five different colored boxes in the event diagram and each of these boxes indicates a general area. So the first box which is in light green color 
indicates the search general area the next box indicates the second general area which is this yellow colored general area then the third general area is the field change general area which is indicated by the blue color the next or the fourth general area is the row accents general area indicated by the pink color and the fifth general area is the save actions indicated by the green color now let's try to understand these general areas using an example so let's say i want to create a new po using the add add update po content reference so let's follow the navigation which is purchasing purchase orders add update pos so you can see that this is the content reference and as soon as i click on this content reference i am now part of this general area which is this search general area so whatever actions i will perform till i am on this search page will form under the search general area now let's say i search for some of the po id now these set of actions will form under search general area now have a look here as soon as i click on one of these row sets which are written as soon as i click on them during this processing before the page is displayed to the user i will fall under this second general area which is highlighted with the yellow color and in this general area these are the set of events which are executed in sequence now as the page has been already displayed to the user i am currently inside the third general area which is this blue color now if i make change to any of the field let's say i change the dispatch method from print to email then i have made the change in one of the field values in that case i will fall under this general area and these are the two events which are available in this general area now the fourth general area is the row accents general area so let's say if i want to add a new row let's say if i click on this add button it is asking for the number of rows to add now as i have added new row i will form under this general area which is the row action general area similarly if i delete or remove at the existing row then also it is part of row actions hence in this general area we have row insert and row delete options these are the two events available now let's say that i am done with making the required changes and finally i want to save this transaction so as soon as i click on this save button i will form i will form under this fifth general area which is the save action general area and in this area these are the four set of events which are fire which will fire in a particular sequence so i think now we are clear with these five general areas so the next important question is you have a requirement with you for that which we have to write the people code but the important question is exactly where to place your people code in order to get the correct output let's try to understand this so if we have to write people code for a particular use case then before we start writing people code for the use case we need to understand the two important things so the first important thing is when do you want your people code to execute so these are the five general areas which we discussed few minutes before so it is clear that for any given transaction your requirement to write the people code will fall under any of these five general areas so the first thing is we should identify the correct general areas in which our requirement falls for example if you have a requirement that when a user is on the add update po page and when he search for a particular po id he should enter at least five characters as a, as a search string in order to search that po so from our observation 
we would understand that this requirement will fall under the search general area. One more example is let's say user is already on the add update PO page. He has to open the PO. He is trying to add the new lines for new items and we want to restrict the user to be able to add only four lines per PO. In that case, it is clear that our requirement will fall under the row actions general area. So using that, we can understand that we can make use of the two events available under this general area, which is either a row insert event or a row delete event. So this is the first part. And the second important part to understand before you start writing people code is to understand where to place the people code. Now this means which event to write the people code in. As we can see, there are multiple events which are associated with various items such as menu, component, record, component record field, etc. So exactly in which event we need to write the people code. So in this video, we understood the sequence of events and the five general areas. Once we have understood each and every event and their behavior, then we will be able to figure out exactly in which event to write the people code. And once we have answer for these two questions, then we can start writing the people code as per our requirement. All right, guys, that's it for this video. In the upcoming videos, we will try to understand in detail about each of the event that we discussed in the event flow diagram. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching.